Um, one thing I want to say before we get the video started is that there's a great book that my friend Tom Parks, uh, he, he wrote this book about uh, fly fishing in central Colorado. So I'm going to put the link in the video description below. If you like to see all these lakes that I go to, I get them out of that book. And uh, that book has, has led me on so many awesome adventures. So I'll put the link in the video description below. Uh, like I said, it's my friend Tom, and it's a, it's a really great resource for fishing. So, all right, let's get the video started. What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a good start to your day here. I wanted to do a video today about the style of fishing that I use because I've had a lot of questions on it. So the type of, type of fishing that I use is Tenkara, and it's a Japanese style of fishing. This is Tenkara USA. It's a company based out of Boulder, Colorado. And these are telescoping rods that are real lightweight. Uh, this rod itself, which I'll bring out and show you here in a second, that rod is called the Hane rod, H-A-N-E, and it weighs... I just see something on your hand. And uh, it weighs 2.5 ounces total, which is amazing. And the cool thing about this type of fishing is I could literally take this with me and go out and fish and just jam all day long and I have plenty of supplies in here. Because this is kind of like a minimalist style of fishing. So this is the rod right here. Let me take off this little cover. And it kind of comes, this one's it's built within a case. So this is, a, this is like a, a case right here that is, um, you know, resistant to, um, you know, any, any sort of like damage. You can put this in your in your uh, bag, put that little padding thing around it and it'd be plenty fine. You don't have to worry about it, it's not gonna break. So, but the way that you do it is you pop off the cap here and you telescope the rod out and there's no reel with this, which I happen to like. Uh, some people don't like tin car. I do the fact they feel like it's really limiting, but I think if you've got a pair of waders and you've got, you know, your, your wading boots, tin car is fine. I mean, you don't have to have a whole setup. And the thing I like about this is that, you know, if I wanted to go out super minimal and go really, really, really lightweight, I could go out with this and my rod. I could literally go out with this and fish all day long. I've got all the supplies I need right here to fly fish. So what, what this little spool is right here, there's a, there's a fixed line on it. And that's, that's, that's what you use with these rods since they don't have a reel. It's a fixed line that just ties right to the end of the Tenkara rod when you extend it out and uh, telescope the the, the uh, rod at, I think this rod's 10 feet, 10 inches. But this line is 13 feet, this fixed line, and I've got six feet of tippet on it. And then at the end of the tippet, I've got a uh, foam caddis with the yellow foam on there. And then you've got a place to store additional flies right down here. So if you wanted to take like three or four flies with you and have some variation, you could. Uh, you could also put it to where the, the flies kind of offset one another. And you can tie up four strings on here because you can put two flies here, two flies there, and rig up, you know, four of these fixed lines, and be good to go in any conditions. And what I really like about this is I can get to an area. I'll go in there. I can get to an area. I can unzip this really quick, get it on the end of the rod, and be fishing in 30 seconds. And then if I want to, I can pack everything down, take this, put the line back on here, just pull it back on, grab this. And I and just and just telescope it back down and put the cap on and I'm good to go. And so it's really convenient in that regard. And the only thing that's nice is it's not as a it's not as um, not as expensive as a traditional fly setup, because there's reels. I mean I've seen reels in the upwards of like four or five hundred bucks, which I think is nuts. And this rod right here, which is a really solid rod, it's got like I said, it's the Hane rod uh, from Tinkara USA, and it telescopes out to uh, ten feet, ten inches. But right here, it's about, I think I think I measured that. I think it's 15 inches. So, um, but uh, you know, it's nice to nice to to have uh, a, a setup up there in the high country that doesn't have slack line, because a lot of the places where I fish, like the high altitude lakes and stuff like that, the problem with having slack line is there's all these little shrubs around the side of the of the um, lakes, and sometimes they can be pretty tall. And if you get into crumb holes and stuff like that, I mean, good luck with the slack line. And so. I just found that my preference is, I'm not telling anybody what to do with their fishing, but you know, my preference is just to go minimal with it because it's easier to work with. And then I can, you know, I can, I can head up there. Um, now, if I wanted to go out with all of my gear, let me grab, grab my right here. If I want to go out with all my gear and really jam, then my preference for a bag here is I, I got this fish pond bag. Like this thing is super old. I must've got this thing about 10 years ago. 
and it continues just to completely crush it it's just i, I love this thing so I'll, I'll deck this all out on the interior here get down here i'll have um on my my net um, you've got a little casing tube if you want to put this inside of it just in case if you get into a spot to where you feel like you need extra protection for your car rod i'll take my water purifier because i'll have my um, nalgene bottle with me so that water purifier is great because then i can just grab water from the lake obviously i always take my bear spray with me and i actually had that in my side pocket here to where i can reach around with my backpack on grab this real easy and pull it out so if any bears or mountain lions get us you know or get close to us i can protect me in sierra and then i've got my thermocell which is the mosquito repellent so if i want to hang hang in the lake and not have mosquitoes you know hit me up that thermocell works really good and then i've got some sims gloves and then as far as the waders go let's see i think i'll have to look these up i forget which which model these are i don't know, i think they've got a new model out now i got these waders these are sims waders they're like let's see which one is it uh it doesn't say which model they are but anyway these are were like the i think they're like the 500 hundred dollar line so they're i mean they're really rugged I, i've never even poked a hole in these things and i i'll go and I'll, I'll like sit on rocks really sharp rocks uh and the rear here just hasn't blown out and the knees haven't blown out like i'll with, with tinkara i'll crawl up to the river's edge or the or the shore of the lake and i'll crawl up so that the, the trout can't see me and don't detect me and you would think the knees would get blown out on that just because like you know, you're in the rocky mountains and they're called rocky for a reason and um there's not just there's, there's, that hasn't happened like the zipper here uh that's about the only thing that is broken and all, all that happened was the little handle came off the zipper but the zipper still works so i'm really impressed with those i'll put the link down in the video description below and you can see where it said sims <laughs> but Let's say if I wanted to go up to a high altitude lake and the hike was like three miles or less, that I would that I would take take my waders and also my um, my wading boots with me and then jam because what I like to do with the high altitude lakes is I like to get out to where like ledges are and then I've found where those ledges are you know if you get out th past the shallows where the smaller fish are and get out to the ledges to the the cutthroats out there typically tend to look up and same with the brook trout and you know rainbows they, they look up that ledge of the drop off in the lake and if you're throwing flies right there where that ledge is those fish are going to come up and jam and and strike one of those flies so i've had that happen a bunch and i just love it and um uh you know if i have all the gear with me with the backpack and i've got the wading boots and the waders and then let's see like a snack and um maybe like a snack for sierra and then my water container and you know the the water purifier and the net and all that stuff i mean the, the pack could get up to like maybe I don't know, maybe 20 pounds, you know, total with everything. But you got to think the majority of that are those wading boots. Those things are heavy. And so, um, but with Tinkara, I just think that, you know, you don't, you don't need to have, I don't know. I, I've, I've had so much success with Tinkara. I've, I hear people knock it and they think like, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that with it. I'm like, well, I do. You know, I, I can, I can go get 20 inch fish. No problem. I can go into a river and jam without any issues of slack line like getting tangled up and stuff and i don't know i mean yeah if if i'm at a big body of water and i don't have my waders then it's then you, know, you kind of have to pick and choose where you where you fish at from shore and basically what you do is you just park it next to a feeder stream and then the fish are you know waiting for the food to come down there and you just you jam out there if it's a big body of water you know you'd be limited and it, it might be a little frustrating but I just don't go to big body of waters like that. And if I do go to a lake, I'll, like I said, I'll go to like a feeder stream or I'll have my waders with me and get out into the sections of the lake that I know are good. So the, the one thing I'm, the, the other thing I really like about Tenkara is I feel like it's more sight casting because like you can sit there and you know, you, you've got a limited area that you can cast to. So you can really, you can really focus in on that area and see what the fish are up to and see what patterns they are for striking, see what it is they're hitting. If there's any, any insects along the shoreline or, you know, if there's like shrimp in the water, you'll see uh, shrimp um, debris or whatever from the carcasses that are eaten along the shoreline. If you mirror that with your fly, I mean, you just, you just jam it out and it's, it's, it's you know, you, you totally crush it. So I don't know. I mean, some people like the whole traditional setup and I, and I totally understand there's definitely advantages to it. I just think with the way I like to hike and, you know, the way I conduct myself back here, the minimalist way of fishing for me is definitely the way to go. 
And the nice thing about the Tinkara rods, like you know, I was saying earlier about how you spend, you could spend like you know, 500 bucks on a reel. Takara rod, like that Hane rod, I think it was 150 total. And then the fixed line, which was the 13 foot fixed line, I think that was $17. And then I, I use monofilament, so that's like 15 bucks for the 6X. Uh, that's like the fishing line at the end of the end of the um, uh, fixed line. So, but I jam with this stuff. I mean, it's it's easy to, to fish with it. I like it because the casting motion is real simple. So let me let me uh, telescope this rod out, and I'll show you what the casting motion's like. All right, so the casting motion on this is really simple. And uh, when you telescope the rod out, always make sure and, and take your uh, cap here, which, which you'll definitely want when, you, when you're ready to pack up. Take the cap and like put it in your pocket or put it in your fishing bag. That way you make sure you don't lose it. Because when you're done fishing, if you don't have the cap on here, the, the tip of this or, or different sections could come out and it could snap off and then you're, you're kind of um, SOL with your rod. But the way you do it is take, your, take the plug off Go ahead and pull this out here. This is the string at the end of the fixed, um, or at the end of the telescoping rod that you're going to attach your fixed line to. So it just comes out in sections. And the nice thing about this is, if a section breaks, you know, you can get another section for like I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that. So the, the rod, once it's all the way out, and here's here's what we're looking at. You know, for the rod, really nice lightweight. It's extremely well balanced. Um, it's got a good backbone on it, which means that you, uh, you, you'll be able to land bigger fish and it can handle more aggressive fish when they're really trying to get away from you uh, without you know, doing any damage to the rod itself. And then the, the casting motion that I use is real simple. It's like I started about 10 o'clock here, I go back to about 2, and then back down to 10. That's it. And then the, the, the fly just lays out there. Now obviously if you're, if you're fly fishing in high winds, you, know, you can get like a braided line for that, which cuts through the wind. Uh, if you have just the regular uh, fixed line that, that this comes with, that's not for wind, so you want to have better conditions, or you could add the wind to your back. And that's one advantage of fishing a lake, is that it's circular, and so you can always find a spot where the wind's at your back. And then you just, when you cast that out, it's super simple. Heck, you just hold your fly rod up in the air like this, and the fly will just go out and you just lay it down. So this is a great way to start to learn how to fly fish, and that's what I use to start uh, to start my fly fishing endeavors. And then now it's like, well, why would I change, you know, to a traditional setup when this is so simple and so easy and lightweight and minimal? You know, it's just, um, I don't know, once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. So, uh, one, one other thing I want to mention before we get done here is that the, um, the way you bring in a fish, if you don't have a net with you, or if you do have a net with you, it's kind of the same, uh, but if you don't have a net with you, it's still, it's still easy to, to get to fish, and if you have a net with you, it's, a, it's much easier much more simple to do so. But um, essentially, so I've got 10 feet of, of, a, of a pole here, and I'm six feet tall, so six feet to here, so we're talking 16 feet. If I go like that, we're probably 18, maybe 19 feet in the air. So I've got a 13 foot fixed line that comes down from here. Okay, so if it were 18 feet in the air, 13 feet down leaves five feet left. So if I put, if I put like, a, like an arm's length, you know, if I, if I stretch out the, the tippet that I want to put on there, the fishing line at the end where I, where I, where I tie the fly to, if I do like an arm's length here, that's about five feet, between five and six. And so that is essentially right there at the bottom of my feet if I'm holding the, the Tenkara rod straight up in the air. So when you catch a fish like that, you know, you kind of let them wear out a little bit. Since you have the Tenkara rod, you don't, you don't want them to just totally jam out. And, you know, especially if it's a big fish, it could potentially snap your line or your, or your rod. But I like to just let them kind of wear out a little bit, and then I'll start to gingerly bring them in. And you, and it's real tender what you do when you when you get them close to the shoreline like that. You know, it's to the point to where the fish it's it's got a, it's got a tight line. If you're about six feet tall, and you, and you've got like the like I said the 13 foot line, like five or six feet to tip it, the fish is literally right there at your feet when you've got it held up like this. And so you just you keep it held high, and you just you reach down, and you grab it. And you're good to go. And you always want to wet your hand when you when you grab a fish because if you've got a dry hand and it's and the scales are kind of moist, it could stick to it and kind of damage your skin. So that's just a cur courtesy thing you can do for fish. Another thing too is a lot of the tinkara flies that which is what I use. A lot of them are barbless, which I like because it's real easy to get it out of the fish's mouth. It doesn't cause any damage to the, well, it causes minimal damage to the fish's mouth. Barely, it's just it's just a little little tiny hook that goes through. And 
the, without without there being the barb on it, you do have to make sure you keep your lines tight the whole time. So I think it makes you improve your fishing skills. And so uh, I use those those flies. They're available on the Tenkara USA website. I'll put that link in the video description below. And I encourage people to try this out. You know, it's it, the barrier to entry for as far as cost is concerned is much lower. And so you know, you uh, if you were to go with the traditional setup, you could you could spend a thousand bucks. Um, with this, 150 bucks plus like 30 bucks in uh, you know accessories when it comes to like the little spool thing and the fixed line, and uh, you're fishing. So it's a great way to do it, and it's lightweight, and it's my preferred method. So, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.